guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, hi, I'm Shelby, and today I am doing a back to basics look for you. And today we're going to do the face. I'm just giving generalized tips for beginners because I don't want it to be do's and don'ts because makeup doesn't have any rules. The important thing about your face makeup is definitely preparation. You want to start out with a clean face and that is moisturized. And the best time to apply your makeup after you've washed your face is within the first 30 minutes. The next step in preparation is primer, and there are plenty of primers out there. There are some in the drugstore and with some that are higher end, but I'm going to apply a pore minimizing and mattifying primer in my T-zone. You do not have to apply a primer all over your skin, just in your problematic areas. So I wait about a minute before I just go straight in with foundation. So let's go ahead and talk about foundation while the primer sits. When you're in the drugstore, they don't always have samples for you to test out so you can test them on your cheek. But you just want to check it against your neck or whichever part that you want to match. Like if I wanted to match my arms, obviously this wouldn't be a match for me. But if you are at like Sephora or Ulta and they have testers, you can go ahead and you can test the foundation on the side of your cheek. Or they have um, machines that like test it for you. So let's go ahead and talk about application. Beauty blenders, the damped beauty blenders are a really big thing right now. And I love the way they apply foundation. They do absorb any excess foundation that you might put on your skin. But using them is also the most natural finish as well. But if you do want to use a brush, I would recommend a dense brush and with synthetic hairs. So you're not going to want to go in with a brush that's like really fluffy. And then you'll take your foundation. I usually just put it on the back of my hand. And I'm just going to dot this on my face. You want to start off with a little. You don't want to overdo it. But since I've used this um, foundation before, I know how much I want. But always start out with less because less is more when it comes to foundation. Plus it won't make you look as cakey. And then with a beauty blender, you're just going to want to start lightly patting. And make sure you bring it back to your ears. Some people apply it to their ears. You don't have to if you don't want to. I'll do this half of my face with a sponge and then I will show you with my brush on the other side. Make sure you go down your neck, especially if your neck and your face do not match. And you want to blend it into your hairline so that it doesn't look like you're wearing a mask. So now I'll go in with my brush. And I'll first start off by spreading out the foundation. And then I'll start doing little circles. You don't have to apply your foundation really close to your under eyes because you are going to go in with concealer if you want but I like the extra coverage, plus I kind of use it to prime my lids. I think I get a more full coverage when I use the Beauty Blender. As you can see, I have a lot more blue going on and some discoloration right here. And over here, I just have a little bit of discoloration. The next tip I have for you when it comes to foundation is if you want a spot conceal, you can use an actual concealer that is your skin tone, or you can go in with just a little bit more foundation, and you don't have to put it all over. You can just go ahead and target that spot that you want. So I want a little more coverage on my cheeks, I have a breakout right here, Let's see, and a little bit right there. And then you'll just really lightly tap in circles to blend the edges of it away and to add, add more coverage. Okay, so the next step would be concealer. For concealer, you can also use it to highlight your face and that's what I like to do. So I go in with a concealer that's a little bit lighter than my skin tone. But if you just want to conceal and you don't want to like highlight, you can just go in with a concealer that is your skin tone. So you go with a concealer that's about one shade or two lighter than your skin. And I just like to apply just a little bit of this one anyway. This is Shape Tape by Tarte and it is painted. And I like to apply it underneath my eyes to conceal any discoloration. And I also apply it on my chin, a little on the cupid's bow the center of my forehead, and then down the bridge of my nose. And then once again, I will use the damp beauty blender to blend it out. You can use a brush for this as well. The one that I would recommend is these, is the Real Techniques pointed foundation brush. It's just a really skinny, flat, synthetic brush. I'd recommend that one, but I just, I don't really like using brushes when it comes to using liquid. And when it comes to concealer, you don't want to just blend it in this area, you're going to want to drag it down and out to give you like the highlighted effect so then you'll have a really nice under eye highlight. And if you drag it upward, it 
gives you a really nice lifted effect. And I'm also just going to take whatever is left in the corner of my eye and prime my lid. You can use an actual eyelid primer, but I can just get away with using concealer to prime my lids. Plus, if you use a concealer that's lighter than your skin tone on your lids, it'll make it look like you're more awake and not dead. Now, the next thing we're going to talk about is baking. You do not have to bake. If you have dry under eyes, I do not recommend baking your face at all because it will dry you out because you're putting a lot of powder underneath your eyes. So for baking today, I'm going to use the Cody Airspun Loose Powder in Naturally Neutral. This stuff smells like your grandma. And I'm going to use my sponge once again. But you're going to want to blend your under eyes so there are no creases. Because once you put the powder, it's setting your under eyes. So you don't want to set those creases. You want to set the non-creases. So you just take a lot of powder and you place it under your eyes. I don't like to put a lot of powder underneath my eyes. I usually just let it sit for a minute and then I'll pat it into my skin. But I like to bake the sides of my nose because when I wear sunglasses, it tends to wear off from the sunglasses. In another place, I like to do this on my brides. I'll do it right in their smile lines. So I'll go ahead and let the bake sit for a few minutes, but if you have dry under eyes, once again, I don't recommend leaving it there for very long. Or if you do have dry under eyes and you want to make sure you stay creaseless, go ahead and just pat the powder into your eyes and uh, get rid of the majority of the powder. But I am going to go ahead and do my eyebrows off camera while my under eyes bake. I'll make a video talking about eyebrows. Eyebrows are just like a really personal thing. So with the power of editing, my eyebrows are on. So we'll go ahead and continue on with the face. If you have dry skin, I would recommend skipping this part or using a really light hand. But um, I have oily to normal skin, so I am going to set the rest of my face using a powder. And I'm going to use a powder that is close to my skin tone. This is just the CoverGirl Simply Powder Foundation in Classic Ivory. So I'm just going to go ahead and set the rest of my face. And I'm also going to go over what I baked and press it into the skin. You can also swipe it away if you want, but I go ahead and just press it in for the added coverage. I like using a powder that has a little bit of color to it to add more coverage to my face and also to set everything underneath. Plus when I set the rest of my face, the rest of the powders that I use really blend out really nice and easy. Alright, so now that you are all one shade and all evened out, let's add some color back to your skin. So bronzer and contouring can be kind of tricky at first, especially if you are a beginner. I would definitely recommend the Kat Von D Shade Light Palette for beginners because it does come with multiple shades. I also recommend this if you are a makeup artist and you see you makeup on clients because you have a good variety of shades to use on whoever you might come in contact with. Wet n Wild also has like a circle contour and highlight. Um, it only has two shades. They have a highlight and then um, a contour color, but I also recommend that one if you're starting out and you need something that's cheaper than this because this can be pricey and if you're looking for a more inexpensive item, I would definitely recommend the Wet n Wild. Also, NYX has a contour and highlighting palette, which is really nice too. But when it comes to contouring, uh, I would recommend a more cool toned color, but not so cool toned that it looks gray and makes you look kind of dead. To bronze my face, I would use this middle shade right here. I don't really use this shade very often unless I'm using it as an eyeshadow, which you can totally do with these colors as well. For contouring, I would take a smaller brush that would fit right into my cheekbones, and I would go in with that color and just really chisel out the cheekbones. And you want to blend upward, not downward, so then it gives you that really snatched look. But I'll make a video just talking about highlighting and contouring in the future, but for right now, I'm just going to go ahead and bronze up my skin. So I am going to go in with this middle shade right here, which is called Shadow Play. And on my Morphe E3 brush, it gives me a really nice targeted application on where I want to put my bronzer. So I just go ahead and put some on my brush, and I suck in, and whenever, wherever it divots in is where I will apply it, and then I will blend upward. Position Formula makes a really nice bronzer. It's the Butter Bronzer. And then Too Faced has a really nice one. That's the Chocolate Soleil Bronzer. Just want to give you guys some options. In case you guys don't want to go out and buy a palette, 
and you just want just the simple bronzing color or you can also buy a face powder that's a few shades darker than your skin tone and you can tell it just really gives my face some structure so I'm not just all flat and matte and one shade so it gives me the illusion of being outside which never happens and then I'll take it down the bridge of my nose, not really contouring, but technically contouring. Just to add some color to my nose, because if not, it's kind of washed out. So I just run it down the sides. Once, but I do very light touches, like lighter touches than what I would do on the rest of my face. And then I'll just grab a really big, fluffy synthetic brush. And I will just go over my entire face make sure it is all nice and seamless. Moving on to blush. Blush is also another like personal thing a lot of people like to put a lot on. Some people don't like blush at all. Some people just like a flush of color. But um, And it also depends on your face shape too. Some people like to just apply it on the apples of their cheeks. Some people apply it kind of where I put my contour. And that's kind of like how I like to do it. I like to start at the apples of my cheeks and then blend outward. But it's always, always, always preference. I'm not quite sure what this brand is on this blush, but you can always, the safest route is to go with a neutral blush at first, and peachy neutrals always look good on pretty much everybody, or a really light pink looks good on everybody, but what you want to do is you want to apply it the way I do, I just do like a little fake smile, and I start little circles on the apples of my cheeks, the apples is this like circle of the circular part on your cheek that looks like an apple and I start there in little circles and then I blend back towards my temple and then once again I'm going to take that big fluffy synthetic brush and blend that blending is the biggest thing when it comes to makeup you really want to make sure you blend everything you do there are plenty of highlighters out in the world from high-end to drugstore i know that maybelline and milani just came out with some wet n wild has an excellent array of um highlighters but today i'm going to use my anastasia glow kit and that glow i know what you're thinking like these shades are a little too dark for me <laughs> but i can get away with these two i'm going to show you two types of highlighting. I'm going to show you just a really simple, easy, like really fresh glow and then I'll show you how to get a pop and highlight. I like to use a synthetic brush. This is my Morphe M510 and I'm just going to touch into the shade Bubbly and I'm just going to hit it on the high point of my cheekbone and I go in like an oval shape like that and then I do like a little circle right on my cheekbone. So bubbly is more of a skin tone color for me, so it's going to give me a really natural glow, and I also bring it underneath my brow bone. And then what you're going to want to do to make it look more of like a natural glow is just go over it with your damp beauty blender, and it kind of simmers it down a little bit, so then you have more of a natural glow, and it's really pretty. But now let's let me show you how to make it pop. You're going to want to go in with a shade that is lighter than your skin tone. So I'm going to go in with Sunburst, which is kind of yellow. In the same place, just a little more. I like to mix my highlights, so I am going to go ahead and dip into Prosecco Pop and Champagne Pop from my Jaclyn Hill Face Palette from Becca. And just to make this a little more poppin'. Go. If you're going in this direction, make sure you go a little bit in this direction just so it blends out so it isn't just a straight line. Alright, so this completes this look. This is just talking about the Back to Basics Face Edition. In the next video, I will be talking about how to apply your eyeshadow. But once again, there are no rules when it comes to makeup. These are just generalized tips and tricks for beginners or for people who just want to learn a little more and expand their knowledge in makeup. So make sure you leave me a comment letting me know what you guys want to see next. And if you have any questions, please let me know down below as well. Don't forget to like this video. Share it with your friends and family, and of course subscribe, and you can hit the notification bell on my channel so you can be notified every time I post. I post one to twice a week, and uh, that's all I have for you. So, I'll see you guys next week. Bye. Boop.